This video will talk about hypothesis tests. We'll use these a lot in the rest of the class. We'll talk about how to conduct tests for significance for two population means to start. Specifically, we're going to do what we call two sample t tests. And we're going to do these assuming that the variances are unequal between the two samples that we're testing. We've covered a lot so far on the foundation of inference and statistics. We've talked about probability and random variables, and we know that our variables that we work with could be discrete or continuous. We've talked about sampling distributions. We've talked about confidence intervals, and we've done one sample hypothesis test. That is, if you remember back to the loon data, we had some data from loons, and we wanted to know something about testing that data from loons that we gathered against some value that we were interested in. But what if we want to compare the means of a quantitative variable for two populations? As an example, we might want to test how many moose are in Minnesota versus Alaska. What are the carbon emissions for China versus the United States? Are there more invasive plants present close to a road or far from a road? These are just a few examples that we might want to test against these two populations. To do that, our parameters of interest are the population means mu1 and mu2. The best approach is to take separate random samples from each population and to compare the sample means. For example, we might count all of the moose in Alaska and all of the moose in Minnesota to say something about whether or not those populations are different. We're still going to use the same notation. Remember our parameters mu1 and mu2, our statistics x bar 1, x bar 2, and our sample size might be different, say n1 and n2. So we can do two sample hypothesis tests to do this. mu1 and mu2 might be independent, or they might be paired samples. Sigma 1 and Sigma 2, or the standard deviation for population 1 and the standard deviation from population 2, might be known or unknown. And then Sigma 1 and Sigma 2 could be equal to one another, or they could be unequal to one another. A lot of these properties will depend on which kind of statistical test we run, and we might get a different answer depending on those assumptions. Here is the formula for a two-sample t-statistic. For two independent samples, this is how we calculate the standard deviation. The standard deviation could be considered as the difference between x-bar sub 1 and x-bar sub 2. To do that, we take each variance and divide it by the number of samples for that population. And then we add to it the second variance divided by the number of observations on that sample and take the square root. And so when we do that, we don't know what sigma 1 and sigma 2 are, but we can replace them with the sample standard deviations. And so you can see how we go from the population sigma to the standard deviation sample uh, s, little s. So we can call this the standard error of the statistics x bar 1 minus x bar 2. And then we can come up with our two sample t statistic. And this approximates a t distribution. So we're going to be going back to the t table in our hypothesis testing to see whether or not uh, differences might exist between two populations. We have two degrees of freedom. Uh, well, just one degree of freedom we'll call k, but it's dependent on the two values n sub 1 minus 1 and n sub 2 minus 1. And so we can think about standardizing the difference to obtain this t statistics. And remember, this value of t that we calculate is going to tell us how far away the observed difference is from its mean in units of standard deviation. And just like we can do a hypothesis test for a one sample t-test, we could also calculate a confidence interval for that difference. And so here we're going to calculate a confidence interval for the difference between x bar sub 1 and x bar sub 2. And that value is going to depend on the critical value of t that we find from the t table with k degrees of freedom 
and some level of alpha. And we'll divide that by 2 because we're looking at an interval, so we want to look at a lower end and an upper end. And then again, that standard error formula for both of the populations combined. And again, we're going to go back to the t-table to compare these values to. Now the two sample t-test is comparing the difference between two means. And so here our null hypothesis will be that mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. That would indicate that they're both the same values. And so we'll calculate our test statistic like we saw before. And we're going to want to find the p-value by calculating the probability of getting a test statistic, or a t-statistic in this case, this large or larger in the direction specified by the alternative hypothesis, which we'll denote h sub a. And so we'll use the t-distribution again with k degrees of freedom. Uh, that's the smaller of the values of n minus 1. And so this will be important if we have uh, two pop or two samples with different numbers of observations in each of those samples. And so we can set up our hypothesis test depending on what we might want to examine. Here our alternative hypothesis would say that mu1 minus mu2 is greater than some hypothesis value, or mu1 minus mu2 is less than some hypothesized value, or that the two hypothesis values, or the two values, are just not equal. Uh, and that is to say, uh, that we might think it might be greater than or less than some hypothesized value that we set forth. To look at this more in depth, we're going to take a look at fertilizer treatments. We're going to assume that we set up 20 plots in a field trial. A farmer wants to compare the fertilizer treatment A versus the fertilizer treatment B and its effect on corn yield. And we'll measure corn yield in terms of bushels per acre. So we'll have different parameters for each sample. So we might have the number of observations, the population mean, and the standard deviation for fertilizer A, and then the same information for fertilizer B. What we really want to know is, does the fertilizer type matter? Is the average yield of the two fertilizers the same? And so we'll go through an example where we calculate this. To do this, we need to have some information from both of the samples. And so here are the summary statistics for both samples. For fertilizer A, we took eight observations with an average corn yield in, in bushels per acre of 190.0 and a standard deviation of 62.5. For fertilizer B, we took 12 samples or 12 fields the average yield was 151.9 bushels per acre with a standard deviation of 46.5. And so here is our hypothesis test. Our hypothesis test is going to be uh, set forth so that the difference between the two values are equal to zero. And the alternative, that mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero. That would make sense given our data here. Remember that we have, uh, we already observed a greater mean yield for fertilizer A, 190 bushels per acre, compared to fertilizer B, 151.9 bushels per acre. And so we're going to run a two-sample t-test at a level of significance alpha of 0 0.05, and we're also going to eventually calculate a 95% confidence interval with these data.